So today on Project Shop, I have a couple stators and rotors I want to remove the copper out of. Uh, but first thing we need to do is get these cases off. And what we're going to use today is, or attempt to use, is this Best Arc plasma cutter that was sent to me by this company. And uh, I've used it once before on the channel trying to cut a big giant copper transformer. It wasn't the right application for the job. It did cut it, but it was just setting too much shit on fire. And it, it wasn't going to work for what I needed. Um, but today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to test it out on some steel. And then we're going to see if we can't cut these off. Now, uh, what I need to do is draw a line with this straight edge down... There's a, a gap that goes all the way down in a couple spots. We're going to have to find one of them. It's going to make it easier to cut. And a lot of times, like I can see a pin here, a pin there. We're going to have to try to knock them out or cut. What I usually do is, uh, usually it's a weld. I'll cut a patch around it with a grinder. Hopefully we can do it with the plasma cutter. Uh, this one has a screw. And basically that's just so that it doesn't rotate in there and, you know, rip the wires out. And then uh, I have this one here that was already cooked in the, in the um, kiln. That's going to pull out real easy. These ones, I'm not sure how easy they're going to pull out, but, you know, we're going to give it a try. If they don't come right out, we're going to uh, put them in the kiln and cook them. Uh, now, this thing here is actually a 220 machine or a 110. Right now, I have, it comes with an adapter. I have it adapted down to 110. So I'm interested to see if we're going to be able to uh, cut this. It's pretty thin steel. I'm pretty sure it should cut it. Uh, the reason why I'm not running the 220 is my air compressor is 220. This thing needs air. And I only have one 220 plug um, around here with an extension. So this thing has a couple features here. It, you know, it has the uh, adjustable thing here. And then you can set that to just blow air. And you can adjust. You can see where you can adjust your your level um i don't know let's leave that on 35 so what that little gauge there is telling you when it's red you have too much pressure in the green you're good and red you got too low pressure it's telling us this thing's automatically detects the voltage it's telling us we're on 110 t2 and then t4 has something to do with the trigger you know see this little standoff cup and it's saying we should be wearing like a helmet and some gloves. And then it has this standoff cup. I think I'm missing that. Or it didn't come with it. Or I don't know. But the T or uh, 2T and 4T has something to do with the trigger. And it's staying on or cutting off or whatever. I don't know. And then this here, PT, three seconds. I'm pretty sure that is... It keeps the air on for a few seconds to cool the tip down after you release the trigger. We're going to leave that on. Three seconds. And then this here is your dial. Oh, we can adjust the seconds. Check that out. Uh, we'll leave it at three seconds, which is the lowest setting. And then um, this is your dial. Oh, that's cool how that dial um, operates different functions. So this dial here, you can crank it down to 15 amps, all the way up to 35 on 110. I don't know if it goes higher on 220. We'll have to, um, you know, work that out in maybe another video. Oh, 15, yeah. So in the 220 mode, we get 15 to 50 amps. And uh, in the 110 mode, we get 15 to 35 amps, so yeah. Oh, here's the T2. Uh, T2, or a 2T and 4T. 2T, press switch, torch working. Stop pressing switch, torch stop working. 4T, press switch, torch working. Stop pressing switch, torch still working. Press torch switch again, torch working. Stop pressing switch torch stop working so i guess it's you hold it you hit the switch and um it'll just stay working say if you're doing a big cut or whatever and you don't want to hold it down i guess it's got a mode where you can just pull the trigger and then and set it to go i'm going to get set up i'm going to get some uh protective gear on 
and uh, cause you know how we want to be safe. And then, um, yeah, we'll see if it works. Oh, and this is actually later on in the day from when I did that live stream with the little furnace, okay? So I want to thank everybody that got on that stream and um, was giving me pointers and suggestions and everything. That was a kind of a crazy situation. Uh, I almost blew up the shop a couple times almost. And uh, there was definitely a learning experience for me. It was the first time I ever did anything with trying to melt copper. Uh, it was unsuccessful for, I think, a couple reasons. One, I don't think I let it go long enough. It looked like right at the end there, it was about to start melting, but the stream was getting kind of long and uh, I just wanted to wrap it up. Uh, but we will be revisiting that. I will be doing a video on that, getting it dialed in, making sure I get everything right, melting stuff. And then eventually, once I get it dialed into where it's working, we're going to go back to a live stream. I'm going to melt copper live. And then we're gonna put it right up on that milling machine in the same stream. And we're gonna make something with the copper. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's work on this uh, plasma cutter and uh, see if we can't get some uh, copper liberated from these stators. Okay, we're just gonna uh, clamp this down. And uh, I think we're ready to go. Put some gloves on. I got a helmet on for safety. Wow. That mowed right through there. <laughs> Check that out. Project Shop FL. So, man, I think it works pretty good. I might have to uh, cut that out and frame it. I can't see nothing with this damn helmet uh, going in the full dark mode. I gotta put it on grind mode. Uh-oh, we cut a breaker off. We're using too much 110. Uh, I gotta figure out what's on that breaker. It looks like my fan and my lights in front of the shop. You know, it's crazy. This outlet is connected to, hold on. The freaking wiring in this shop is so wonky. That outlet there is connected to the outlet all the way in the front of the shop and these lights so i need to turn this off i was running my fan and these lights it's crazy they want so much in rent with inadequate electric i only have one 220 plug all right let's try this again what's cool is my air compressor hasn't even kicked on yet it seems to be doing a really good job 
or it was. Okay. We'll have to hang that somewhere. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Man, I'm liking the plasma cutter light. Ugh, man, it's freaking hot. I had to turn my fan off. Freaking heat's already kicking up in here. All right. Let's get some lines on here. See what we're gonna need. Oh, this one's gonna be easy. This has a big gap here. And then uh, looks like we have one, one screw. And sometimes they'll have like a plug weld. Or hopefully that's that's it, just that one screw. This one looks a little more involved. Looks like we can cut it here. Whoa. And okay, let's see how we do. Now I don't know if I need to grind back. I might need to grind back the paint a little bit, but this has some rust, so maybe it'll conduct through the rust a little bit. I don't know. We're about to find out, though. Definitely need a, uh, a 220 uh, uh, plug for this thing. Woo! You definitely got penetration. Ah. All right, let's see if that's loose. Oh yeah. That did a great job, man. Look at that. 
Okay. We're gonna move on to uh, this one over here. This one's probably gonna be a little more involved. We do have it on the lowest setting, and this one's got a lot cleaner looking metal. We might have to scrape that. I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a we'll give it a shot here. Hey man, that thing works good. It's connecting right through the paint. We'll let it cool down for a second. I don't want that breaker to keep popping. Once the breaker pops once, it's already hot. And these are them old style FPE or FPC breakers where they, like this shouldn't even be allowed in this building. I knew I should have stopped. I was literally right there, man. I had a half inch. Shit. And that's all the way on low. So I guess it's probably treated like a welder with a duty cycle. You know, like if you weld for five seconds straight, you're supposed to let it cool down for 20 seconds or whatnot. Yeah, I was kind of pushing it there. I will say it's doing a good job. I can't say that it's not. Uh, although I have nothing to compare it to because I've never had a plasma cutter before. But I'm already, um, I'm already liking it. Yeah, that freed right up. Heck yeah. Man, that thing just disintegrated that that peg. That's what I'm talking about. I already like this much better than a grinder. A grinder is just like super loud. It's really dusty. And I'm not saying that this isn't a cleaner. I mean, it's blowing sparks everywhere and probably putting off fumes with those those grinders. You're putting off fumes. I don't think no matter what you do when you're cutting metal, unless you use, I've actually seen a, a machine that has a blade on a roller and they'll roll it back and forth like a can opener and cut these open. Um, that's the only way you're gonna have it where you're not gonna get fumes. If you cut it with a torch, you cut it with a grinder, or uh, I guess a sawzall or a bandsaw would be another way of not making fumes. But this is this is good. This is fast, man, and and I like it. We're getting loose. I think we got two more of those pegs to do. Let me just flip this up on its side. Whoa! Oh. oh no, that's it. Look. This peg came out. He didn't want the smoke, man. He's like, nah, don't burn me. I'll just come out for you. We got wires holding us up. Bam! That's what I'm talking about. Now, unfortunately, this one looks like it has way less copper than this one. Either way, we're going to cut the end off. Now, I really want to try the plasma cutter, but I think what that'll do is just melt the end and glob it up and make it hard for me to pull it through. So, we're gonna wrap up the plasma cutter right now and then um, I'm going to 
probably solves all this and then maybe hit these ones with the grinder and hopefully uh, hopefully these come out relatively easy I know I did a couple of these and they were tough man it's funny this one here this rotor goes with this and this looks like it has more copper this has less copper and then that one there looks like it has less copper so I guess it all depends on what the what the model was but for now we're gonna wrap this up uh, my first impressions of actually doing something with this uh, best arc plasma cutter I like it I can't say anything bad about it if I was on the 220 mode we might have been able to just keep cutting I don't know if this has a duty cycle I probably should read all the instructions but um, for what I just did with it it worked great I can see this being a good addition to the shop as long as it keeps working it's probably going to work better on a 220 mode because it's not pushing itself to the limit or pulling more amps than the breaker can handle but um hey so far so good the jury's out the jury's going to be out whether it's going to be uh, a long lasting thing um you know i'm always suspect of things that come from china but hey if it works it works and uh it's better than the plasma cutter i had before it which was none at all so all right i'm gonna get set up on cutting these coils and then we're gonna get these things right in the stator wrecker and uh, see if we can't pull this copper Okay, that took a combination of the Sawzall, which worked really well for these ones. It just walked right through it. And then I tried the Sawzall on this one, one of these, but it once you cut one of them, it just starts pulling the uh, individual strands and it, it kind of just wiggles it back and forth and doesn't even cut it. The cutoff's the way to go with that. Uh, this one here, uh, it had all this extra stuff in the way so in, instead of cutting like this like I did on those I just came in straight this way and then I cut off this had all these Aluminum nubs. I kind of cut them out of the way so I can get my claw in there and grab on that Hopefully they come out. I was on the fence of whether To cut it off of this side or this side because this is actually a bigger shaft on this side and uh, it's actually a little bit smaller and looks like it might be easier to grab over here but what I'm thinking is if I'm having a hard time getting in there I'm just gonna come in with my cutting torch and burn this out because it's hollow it'll cut right off and then I can come in there and get a good grab on that but I think this is gonna come out okay I am going to loosen these up um, I don't think in the big scheme of things they're doing too much but we want to give ourselves every chance possible. And um, yeah, I'm going to uh, set the hydraulic ram back up on the table, get this dialed in, and uh, we're going to start pulling copper. Okay, we got this thing uh, set up pretty well. Let's uh, put that there. Get this in here. Hopefully we are... Um, the right range I just lowered this down all right oh yeah I might be able to get this in two pulls. Almost. That was light work, man. Oh, we sheared off all that copper. That sucks.
so I got a lot of comments about you know this thing pulling um, it, it does work best when you're pulling on just like one of them straight on when you grab it here it is kind of pulling them in but to start with there really ain't much you can do problem with pulling all the way through this is definitely going to get easier once I'm able to split this in half but man we just pulled out a nice chunk of copper real quick we might not be able to get this last piece oh yeah we got it Nice little chunk. Nice chunk of prepared. Now, maybe if I get enough of this, I can get a silica steel. Oh man, it's coming out like butter. Oh yeah. So that's like two different color uh, like the shellac that they got on there they got two different colors in there man this is nice <laughs> look at that too easy, man. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, let's see if we can't get the copper out of this thing. I might have to adjust this down again. I think we were putting some pressure on that 2x4. Uh, oh, no. Alright, we're at a stroke. We're just gonna use this uh, ballast. Hopefully. Hopefully we can uh, get enough stroke out of this to go all the way down. We're, this is about the lowest we're gonna be able to go. Table up. 
mean, it's only... Uh, we're like a half inch. Yeah. See, we're down on the ground there. I had to put a jack there. Now that thing is uh, all the way on the floor. All right. Let's see if uh, if we can get this out. Come on, baby, let's go. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is gonna be a problem. Oh, first of all, let me get my spacer out of there. Okay. Now, what I need is a spacer under this. Damn. I'm gonna get out the cutting torch and we're gonna cut this thing off so we can get a better grip. Definitely be wearing uh, tinted glasses. I can't see shit after doing that. Um, with just regular safety glasses. 
I'm gonna put this welding helmet on. I think I'm just gonna work the top first and then the bottom. Okay, so my problem right now is um, the geometry of this. I can't get a good bite on this. I think if I could get a good bite on it, I could probably pull it out. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the air hammer. I'm going to go to the back side. I'm going to hit it with this uh, button. And then I'm going to try to get this down in there and kind of just work it free a little bit. Hopefully, it'll, um, hopefully something will happen. We'll see. Man, I think that was just spreading. I'm gonna slide this forward a little bit. This thing has to grab it's just not it's not letting it uh it's not letting it do its thing That's a nice chunk of copper right there. Dang. Alright. I might have to clean this one up with the torch. Let me see if I can't just get on it. Now that I turned it sideways. Oh man. And I bent the crap out of those handles. That's what I'm talking about. not what I'm talking about. Shit. I knew I should have um, cut that shit out of the way. I'm going to have to cut that cut that back a little bit and cut this pin off right here so I can grab it from right in the middle.
Yeah. Hopefully that put a little heat in there and uh, loosen things up. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice chunk of copper there. Woo, that's hot. So, sometimes to recover copper, you got to use a grinder, a torch, and a hydraulic puller. We're going to get all the copper no matter what. She did not want to give up the copper. Alright, let's move on to this cooked one. This should be relatively easy. This should literally just like fall out, really. Wrong foot pedal. I got two foot pedals down here. Come on, baby. Go, go, go. they're cooked that makes a big difference but it's also time and energy uh, involved we want to be able to do this without having to cook it look like they'll almost fall right out. Get on that. Oh, shit. Try something different with this one. Okay, uh, the GoPro got uh, hot and shut off, or the battery died, one or the other. But I was able to get this out literally with just a hammer and a chisel. Let me show you, sometimes, uh, just straight up brute force and old school hand method will get the trick done. So I started off with this blunt broken thing and uh, got it down in here. Let me move this over. Got it down in here just to break it loose and to get it down well, so that I can get my chisel down in there 
and then I, I drove that literally straight in like that and this one is kind of just pushing out hardest part is where this aluminum thing is holding it up and this chisel is too wide to get in between here uh, so I'm using this one which I wish this handle wasn't here but I want to get it knocked down first so that I can get the other chisel down in the groove. Give that some place to go. See? Sometimes you don't even need a state of record, or hydraulics or anything. Need some old fashioned hand tools. Now, I definitely don't want to be doing this by hand at all, really. Nice, uh, nice little chunk. So, the way I seen this done without any cutting blades and just the press was the guy took a custom splitter and he came down right here and split this not like you would split this all the way through with a sharp blade he split it just down enough to the shaft he, he just forced that blade down in there and it split it and he was able to pull the copper from both sides um, and then on them big rotors that had the uh, aluminum he was able to come down with a blade and just shear this off he wasn't cutting nothing the only thing i seen him cut with an actual blade was the big giant um, staters with the copper bars in it it wasn't it wasn't wound like with the wire it was like big giant bus bars going through and he cut it and left like a half inch and then he had a special pincher that had more of an angle like this and he was able to get in between the plates and pull them straight out this guy had his shit dialed okay and um we're gonna get there one day we definitely need like i'm gonna say four different pairs of these with different ends on it or one of these with replaceable ends i don't know if i want replaceable ends it's just more shit to break out here I'd rather have four dedicated ones for different applications, getting in tight spots. One with just a beak. Uh, that's the one I seen him using for shit like this. He was able to get down in between shit because he had a one with a, a beak where one was by itself and there was two on the other end. So he was able to get that one in there. We're going to get there soon. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty stoked about uh, what we accomplished today, even though that one was freaking tough and uh this one we wind up just doing by hand the the staters even though i didn't split them in half the machine just pulled the copper out like nothing we got a nice chunk down in here and um we still got some transformers to crack and i found some more oh you know what i have this that looks tough we might have to cook this in the uh, kiln. And then I have these two that I found that were too small. What I might do is, um, I don't know what I might do with that. They look like they would come out pretty easy. I might just be able to use that air hammer and uh send it send it down through there and, and and pull that stuff out uh if i do that that's going to be on another video so 
Uh, for now, I'm gonna uh, take a break and cool down because that was some hot work. Yeah, I need some fluids. So uh, if you come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We still got a lot of scrap in here. I have some more um, things to review. Probably like three more things that someone sent me. I'm gonna knock those out because they keep emailing me. <laughs> On that note, thanks for watching. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. I could do about it. We're just gonna have to see if we can't get this out of there. And then it is like a little bit. <laughs> 